is and his companions. Saint Lawrence is the first Filipino to be canonized a saint in the church. I wanted to make mention of him because many of our viewers are Filipino and many of our viewers from the Philippines will be celebrating this day with great festive. St. Lawrence along with 15 others that included two consecrated women, two other laymen, two brothers and nine priests were martyred in Nagasaki, Japan in 1637. St. Lawrence was a married man with three children. <laughs> One year before he was martyred, he fled the Philippines after being accused of murder. He joined a missionary group headed for Japan where Catholics were being persecuted in order to bring the faith to those in Japan. And it was not long after that that it was found out that this group was Catholic and they were all arrested and taken to the city of Nagasaki. They were all tortured for three straight days, hanging upside down. They forced water into their mouths and they would put boards on their chest and stamp up and down where so much water was in them the water was coming out their noses their ears they were sticking bamboo shoots up their fingernails it was a very horrible death a very tragic way to die over three a period of three days their bodies were then burned and their ashes were thrown in an, into the Pacific Ocean on September 30th 1639 before st. Lawrence died he said had I many thousands of lives I would offer them all for him Never shall I apostatize. You may kill me if that is what you want. To die for God, such is my will. Notice he said my will. He was conforming his will to God's will. On the occasion of his beatification, in 1981, Blessed John Paul II said these words, The example of Lorenzo Ruiz, the son of a Chinese father and a Tagala mother, reminds us that everyone's life and the whole of our one's life must be at Christ's disposal. Christianity means daily giving in response to the gift of Christ who came into the world so that all might have life and have it to the full. Everyone's life and the whole of one's life must be at Christ's disposal. Do we really put our lives at Christ's disposal? Do we allow Christ to accomplish his saving mission, first of all, in us? Do we allow Christ to save us? And then after that, do we allow him to accomplish his saving mission through us? Do we bring his saving mission out, not just to ourselves, but to a world that desperately needs to hear the message of the gospel? In other words, as Mother Teresa once told the late John Cardinal O'Connor, you can imagine if you know Mother Teresa being about four foot nothing, looking up at a tall John Cardinal O'Connor who was towering over her, 
Mother Teresa took his hands, grabbed his hands, his priestly hands, and she said to him, give God permission. Give God permission. God needs our permission. Each one of these martyrs gave Christ permission to live and to suffer his own death in and through them. May we too give Christ that permission to live his life in us. We, we may not be red martyrs, but every single day we have to die. Die to that old man. Die to ourselves. Give God permission. <laughs>